Hey guys, this is Drew with the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how fake slabs could lead to the downfall of the graded coin market. Make sure you guys watch this video, it's very important. So every coin dealer should have an email that they use to you know, get tips about collections or go to certain coin shows. People will send you notices about that. But Blake told us a few weeks ago when going to the Tyler Coin Show that he received an email um, from a company that is willing to put any coin that he wants in any slab that he wants with any grade that he wants. And so um, what's interesting about this is that basically they would say they would take a details coin or they would take a coin that is of lower grade and they would put it either in an NGC or they would put it in a PCGS holder for Blake at a certain cost. And that's where the problem starts. So Blake being an ethical coin dealer would never indulge in this service or use it to hurt his customers or his brand. But as you know, in the coin space, there are people that would stray away from stuff like this. And then there's people that would use this to make money for themselves. Now, when you think of duplicated slabs over the years, you guys have seen a few like this where the fonts messed up and the coin is completely wrong. It's like a steel coin and everyone understands that as a coin dealer or as a collector that this coin is wrong. But it's getting a little bit more sinister because the coins are looking almost identical in their slabs. And let me show you something that we found from KM Coins. So KM Coins posted something on Instagram sharing two 1901 P's with the same cert number and it looked to be the same coin until he received it in hand. The one that you see from a great collections photo, which is a little bit more vibrant, is the original coin. And the other coin is the one that has been manipulated or has an issue. And basically what, that, what this company did was they took that coin, they fabricated a PCGS slab, they fabricated a PCGS label, and then they used that to sell a coin either on eBay or they would sell it on a different auction platform. Now a 1901P in MS62 is pretty expensive already, so that's a big reason why they would want to duplicate this lab and they would want to pass it on to a collector that maybe just doesn't study grading as much. They just look mainly at the piece of paper that tells them that it's MS62. But there's also something that's a little bit worse than that, is that they're also not only duplicating PCGS and NGC slabs, but they're also duplicating CAC stickers. And as you know, CAC stickers can add a 20% premium onto a coin and even more so if it's a higher end coin. So that's something that we have to look out for as well. So in this video, we wanted to talk to you not only about the problem, but how to prevent it and the possible solutions going forward. So the coin market isn't so affected by this that uh, it ultimately will lead to a sort of downfall or a dip in the market. So here's a few points that I wanted to talk to you about just so you were made aware of it. Uh, what I would prescribe as a coin dealer is studying each slab and each coin closely, um, especially high grade coins, right? So if someone's wanting to duplicate a coin, they're going to want to use um, a coin that almost looks like that grade, but isn't going to match it. But also they're going to want to put a higher end coin in a fake slab because ultimately if you're going to put your name and credibility on the line, you're going to want to make as much money as possible. I don't see people doing this for coins under $100 per se, but I do see them doing this for coins that are over $100 just because, um, like I said, there's ethical and then there's those unethical coin dealers out there that will take advantage of people. Another thing that you should be weary of is coins that are marked really low according to their market value. And a good example of this is like an 1880S Morgan dollar and graded MS67. A lot of them are going between 750 and 950 based on if they have a CAC sticker or not. But say you go to a coin show or you go on eBay and there's one price for $400. That's something that should be a red flag to you as a collector and will ultimately keep you safe in terms of being taken advantage of. And so thankfully we had someone that does a lot of research in slabs and how you can detect if a, if a slab is fake or not. And his name is Kyle from KM Coins. Make sure to go follow him on Instagram or check out his website, coininvestmentpros.com. But a first thing that you guys should look at is the front of the slab, is the slab insert that they put in there to begin with. A lot of these um, that are fake aren't going to have stippling, what I would call stippling, all the way throughout the front of the label. Make sure to check out this photo right here so you guys know what I'm talking about. 
Basically, stippling should be required throughout the whole entire label from top to bottom and even go through the barcode. But if you see one that's fake on the other side, the one that's fake, um, basically the stippling will kind of bleed out of that label and you'll only have kind of a white bottom right by the barcode. That's something that's a telltale sign that your slab is fake. But let's show you guys a few more things. Another thing to pick up on on the slab insert is the label. Um, is the font bolded or is the font not bolded? As you can see, the MS65 Plus with the CAC sticker is original, but the one that is MS66 Plus is a counterfeit. I guess they use the same exact font, but they didn't bold it to begin with. That's what it at least looks like from this photo, so make sure to keep an eye out for that also. If you look at the back of the insert on the PCGS slab, you'll also see the PCGS logo counterfeited as well. You can see with the genuine version, there's a little bit more of a, a gold or yellow to it, and the details of that G is a little bit more pronounced. But when you look at the fake, it's a little bit flatter, and it looks a little bit more brown, and the details are a little bit more splotchy. So they didn't really get a, too good of a fake on this one, and that's something that also is a telltale sign for you if you're a collector wanting to watch out for the slabs that you buy. So if you guys want to see more points like this and you guys want to see what KM Coins is talking about, make sure to follow him down below. We're going to leave his Instagram there and his website. But what I would recommend is being very cautious, like I said, because we're not looking at old slabs that were fake with steel coins in them. We're looking for ones that are actually counterfeits that would confuse auction houses, coin dealers, and coin collectors that have been in the space for a while. And so I'm going to offer in this video a few solutions that some of the, you know, the grading companies, maybe auction houses, maybe you can also implement in your collecting journey just so, you know, even if it only happens once, it just, we don't want it to happen once at all. We want these to be found and then we also want them to be um, put in their correct holders or cracked out so no one else gets hurt by these. So first things first, I would recommend having images re be required at every grading agency. So NGC or PCGS, no matter what coin you send in, if you want to pay for it or not, they should be required that they photograph your coin. Because ultimately, like I said, if these people are wanting to create an identical cert number to the coin that you have and then sell it to somebody at a coin show and also get them on the hook for a coin, I would say that this is going to ultimately hurt the brand of PCGS or NGC and when a collector or a dealer is hurt like that in that way, people will start to leave the hobby and it would ultimately hurt their brand in the long run, maybe even destroy their brand. So that's something that I would recommend first for PCGS and NGC. Another thing that I would recommend, which is basically starting at the fundamentals of numismatics is know how to grade coins, pick up a lot of coins at shows. Try to understand why that coin was graded that way, if it's in a genuine holder or not. Because the way that people get fooled is that they don't know what coin is in that holder. They're just looking at the paper and they're buying the coin. They don't care about what coin's in the holder sometimes, and that's going to end ultimately cost you money. Um, the biggest ways that you can understand that you're being had or taken advantage of is that you're not studying. You're not following what people are telling you. Um, you're not training your eye so that you can save yourself money in the long run. Either you know buying coins that are great because they're good for the grade and then they'll cack and then they'll make you money. There are all those different venues, but there also are venues of um, if you're not studying the grades and then you end up buying a slab that's fake and then you never see that coin dealer again or they won't give you a refund. Sometimes that you know that that is bad that that happened, but we also have to recognize that we did not study enough and we ultimately lost it because of that. A few good ways to train your eye is, you know, using books like the ANA book that they use for grading, um, constantly looking up PCGS reviews. Uh, PCGS puts out photos for top pop coins and coins with all different types of grades where it can allow you to understand why that coin is graded that particular way and it will allow you to, like I said, build your eye. Another thing is, uh, you know, videos on YouTube. We show off a lot of videos uh, with different coins that you guys would like. And if you guys want to see coins that we have, AkushaCollectibles.com, shameless plug. But like I said, also holding many coins. When you go to a coin show and you like walkers, ask the coin dealer if you can pick up every walker and study it and figure out and understand the reason why it's that. Because like I said, when you see that fake slab at a show, you're going to know because of the coin 
and you're going to know because of the label and you're going to save that collector or that dealer a lot of pain and heartache because you were willing to sacrifice time to help them. When you're buying a coin at a coin show, I would also ask who owned the coin before you and also write down the coin dealer who sold it to you because you're going to want to create a paper trail for yourself in case the slab is fake or in case you made a mistake. Um, I think a lot of times what's the issue is that people are just going out and buying coins and coming and bringing them back and not documenting it properly. But I would say that what, what we do is we remember who sold it to us. We ask a little bit of the backstory of the coin and that ultimately will help you either return it or stop the flow of that from happening again. So that coin dealer doesn't get hurt and you don't get hurt also. So to pair along with that, I would also ask for an invoice after every transaction with a detailed uh, description of the coin. Is it toned? Is it blast white? Um, is it ugly toned? Um, what's the cert number of that coin? I want them to post that on the invoice as well. Because say like, I, say like what we did is, you know, we went to a coin show, bought a fake coin, and then we brought it home, and then we found it online, and it was a completely different coin with the same cert number. We at least knew... Um, that coin was fake, but also there's, like I said, there's a paper trail to where you can bring it back to the coin dealer and say, hey, this coin's fake, this is why, we have the reason why, here's your invoice, can you give me a refund? And a lot of coin dealers will do so because they want your business, but they also don't want you to leave the hobby. There's a lot of great ethical dealers out there that will take, uh, take care of you if something were to happen to you like that. So another thing that I would also recommend, which is a little bit thinking about the future of the business is that PCGS and NGC should go to every single coin dealer at bigger shows like the ANA show or the summer fun show um, and ask them, hey, when's a good time for me to take photos of your high value coins and make sure they have true views? Um, like I said, you're mitigating that, um, that risk and that issue with coins um, because of course their coin is genuine and they wanna photograph it and they wanna verify it but like I said, say if uh, you know, that coin is off at auction or that coin's in a collection and then a duplicate of that coin comes up on eBay and someone buys it for an insanely cheap price or um, you know, it, that can happen with, with many coins. So what I would say is that if PCGS started to implement at every single show, um, taking photos of every coin in their slabs that are of higher value, maybe they put a threshold of $2,500 or more and they basically work with dealers to make sure that their coins are legitimate but also that what they have images for those coins so when someone sees a duplicate slab they can type in the cert number on pcgs or ngc and the image pops up and they can recognize that this is not the same coin as the one that's pictured on ebay or elsewhere this would also help with uh, every auction house um, because like i said they can look up the true view of the coin and they can also you know see if it's authentic um, and also what I would recommend as a final point is that auction houses should have a whole group of, of people that are willing to look at the slab, willing to look at the coin for its authenticity. Um, and, you know, if they aren't going to do that, then like I said, that's going to ultimately hurt them and their credibility as an auction house. And well, you know, that could end up hurting them and maybe somebody even sues them and that would be terrible as well. So what I would say is offer a, a team willing to look at the slab, willing to look at the coin to make sure everything's authentic before they take it to auction. So what I would say for you guys in closing is that I would share this video with friends that you feel like would have this information useful when they go to coin shows or are looking for coins online. Like I said, also follow Cam Coins on Instagram. Check out his website because he really is an upstanding coin dealer that you need to keep track of. He's going to be growing exponentially over these next few years and um, I'm so fortunate enough to call him my friend. Make sure to like this video if you guys want more videos like this. Comment your thoughts about fake slabs. Are they going to jeopardize the uh, kind of where uh, coin slabs are right now? And subscribe for more videos because we're coming out with them every single week. And we want you guys to be a part of them. But we will see you guys in the next video.